our inner dialogue is like the conversation that we're consistently having that is our thoughts, our feelings, and our beliefs about who we are and makes up our self-image or our identity. And remembering that as we're working with manifestation, as we're going through our spiritual awakening journey, that life is a mirror, right? So what's going on in our inner landscape is being reflected in our external 3D reality. And as we go in and we start to work through and become aware of our patterns and our conditioning, we start to see how that was creating kind of the old narrative, the old story, the inner dialogue. Because what's key to transformation is becoming aware of your story. What is the story of you? How do you see yourself? What do you believe about the world? Because our beliefs can become so subconsciously held as true that we believe them to be true. And because beliefs create our reality in the way that then we, we attract the resonant match to kind of like, you know, prove us to be right. So if you believe the world is a cruel and harsh place, or you act as a cruel and harsh person towards other people, you're gonna get that reflection back. But if you believe that the world is filled with possibilities and is a beautiful place, and you appreciate the nature and the sun rising up to another sacred breath, and you choose to live from your heart, you're gonna attract people that are on a similar wavelength, right? So becoming aware of your story, what do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about the world? And that is most of the transformation right there because then it's no longer just you're automatically living in it. You're in the reactive mind. Now you actually have the ability to respond and now you can go in and start to question these beliefs or these limiting beliefs. You can start to become aware of your inner dialogue. This is so in this video, we're diving in today the inner dialogue and how becoming aware of our inner conversation and what we think, what we feel, and what we believe about ourselves and the world to be true forms what's called our self-concept. And your self-concept is your self-image, right? It's who you imagine yourself to be. So when you understand that your image, your how you imagine who you are is actually uh, in your imagination, right? So people often try to visualize changes in the external world without doing the deep inner work to actually change themselves to be the one living in that scene. And this is also quick shout out to Neville Goddard. Um, you know, he was a mystic of the early 1900s that taught what's called the law of assumption. And this is about you know, assuming the end state, right? That your assumptions and your beliefs create your reality. And as you feel it as if it's already happening. Now, what's really powerful about that is that when you're um, visualizing, you're not visualizing, you're not thinking about it. You're not thinking of it, right? You're thinking from it, right? From the state of consciousness. You're, you're learning as you as you go in and you pay attention to your inner dialogue, your th what, what thought streams, what intentions, what images, what visualization, right? Because it's kind of how your imagination creates your reality. It's also how you get inspirations and downloads for your creative endeavors, for your businesses, how opportunities come into your life. You wanna be the version of yourself that is the match to that reality. So when you're thinking not of it, but you're thinking from it, now you're actually stepping into embodying that version of yourself. And that is a core level transformation. So let me break this down into three parts for you of three stages of transformation. So when we start waking up, going through our spiritual awakening journey, we start becoming aware of things like the law of attraction. We start becoming aware of the law of vibration or just that everything in the universe is made of energy, right? 
and that electromagnetism exists in this universe. So when something is a certain match to a certain frequency, more of that frequency is drawn or organized or brought into your experience around that particular frequency, right? And so, but we, we often enter at the level of thought, right? This is where you hear like uh, thoughts create reality, right? <clears throat> but there's levels of depth to actually understanding that because it's not just about thinking in your head, positive thoughts, right? And this is as you go deeper, you get into the, the feeling, right? The feeling is the secret. The feeling is the magic. It's how, like, it's actually how you feel it in your emotional guidance system. And also when you're thinking and you're feeling, you're making that, you know, brain and heart connection, you're creating a coherent field. Like you actually want to feel yourself being in that version of you. And that's where you get into beliefs create reality. Now, what is a belief? A belief is nothing more than a thought you keep thinking, right? It's a habitual thought. And most people, until they question their beliefs, they be that what their beliefs are, they hold as true. So to them, it's not actually a belief. It's a truth. It's a personal truth. Um, but the thing is, is many of our personal truths until we do this inner work don't actually serve us. And people will fight for their limitations. So before you get to the level of belief, you've got basically the line of the conscious and the subconscious. The th level of thought of, of your sifting and your sorting, your conscious awareness, your thinking of things, what you're aware of, right? And then you've got the line into the subconscious of these beliefs, limiting beliefs, what you believe about yourself to be true in the world. And then you've got a relationship between the two. Now, I was once asked by someone um, that was consulting my opinion or consulting uh, my wisdom about uh, what maybe I could help them to understand about this. And they were asking me, so they're like, okay, well, as you start doing this work, is it like now your conscious mind is going into the subconscious and creating your subconscious? And I'm like, well, that's the tricky thing about this is that you, it's like, yes, there is a level of effect where you have a level of focus where now you can start choosing which thoughts and what you're going to let into your subconscious, things that you're paying attention to, what media you're watching. When somebody says something to you, whether you have an energetic boundary or you can literally be the guard at the gate, right? And you can, you can say yes or no to what you allow into your subconscious lover, as Neville Goddard called it. And, but the thing is, is that your subconscious, right? The deeper level, um, sometimes called the subconscious tank or the, um, you know, it's this place where everything is held, like impressions get held, and then they create these patterns in our experience that we become aware of over time. So it's like, when you, another way of looking at it is that actually your subconscious is creating your subjective perspective. So that's the thing about this is that that's why we do inquiry work. That's why it's not just about positive thinking because if you don't know yourself, how can you possibly know what your purpose is in life? You can, you can say that it's all an illusion, but until you're having a really embodied experience of happiness, right? And being on your path and feeling your calling and knowing who you are, what is your heart's desires? Because if you want to manifest anything in life, I can guarantee you that you're trying to embody, right? Not escape, embody, drop, dropping into the experience, right? That's why it used to be, uh, what it, was it, drop out, to, tune out or whatever, when people were trying to kind of like rebel against the system. And now today it's the, the tapped in, tuned in, turned on is kind of the evolution of that pop culture. Um, because it's like you, as you start to realize that there is a heart's desire, there's a true calling, right? Whereas we have our own like soul mission. We have something that, like we have things that are truly resonant with who we are. And then we also have programming and we have limiting beliefs at every level of the stage as we're going through these expansions, as we're going through this growth and this evolution, right? To be able to use self-inquiry and be able to look at these things and be like, is that really true? Who would I be if I didn't believe that, right? 
Like for me, for a long time, what held me back doing these videos is I didn't have complete confidence over like, do I know enough? Or also I was in the process of really practicing so that I could feel confident as a speaker. Yet as I leaned into that fear over the years of making content and also going to events and speaking in front of other people, I learned to face that emotion and to integrate that. And, and then I did it anyways. And every time that I faced that fear and I did it anyways, I got better and I got stronger. And it's like, it just reminded me of something of like, oftentimes we give up on something before we even try because we have these limiting beliefs that tells us that we can't do it. But how do you know, how do you even know if you don't try? All right, and that comes down to the deeper level of like looking at that and being like, oh wait, I actually, and then experiencing that transformation of like, now actually I'm confident speaking. Now I get compliments on people, like being like, wow, that feels really natural for you to, to do this. And, you know, it's also been a part of the clearing of my voice and the clearing of my, um, you know, solar plexus and stepping into that, that confidence of the bridge between that and my creative energy and being able to cultivate that to become a clear channel for what wants to come through. And I believe we all have the ability to do that. It's just like we do the practices every day and it really helps with that. So having that consistency, because the more that you start looking into the unknown, see, most people want to stay in the comfort zone, but you know, your path of least resistance is not always the easiest. It's, it's, it's like what, where the water actually wants to go sometimes is deeper and into yourself. That's why it's so important to listen to our intuition and not to pedestal uh, spiritual teachers. So when you go deeper into yourself and you look at this deeper layer, right? So I was talking about people, you start like, okay, thoughts, I'm gonna think positive. Oh wait, I actually have these uh, deeper patterns. Okay, beliefs create your reality. So first it's thoughts, then it's beliefs. Beliefs are habitual thoughts. And then the deeper layer is identity. Now, what is an identity? So we said, you know, thoughts, Beliefs are made of habitual thoughts. So then your identity is kind of made of a collection of beliefs that you hold about who you are and what the world is, right? I'm a this, I'm a that. That's an identification. It's called self-identification. You become the equation of I am and whatever you put after it. And I'm not talking about trying to fool yourself when you're not really feeling something with a bunch of I am affirmations. Right? There's a deep level of clearing work and self-inquiry to be like, who am I? You know, and like, what are the beliefs that I hold? Like really questioning what you identify with because you're going to become whatever you identify with. And as you clear up that space, that's when you can start to like take on a new form. That's also uh, lots of Neville shout outs today. But he talked about this where, you know, you can go into this meditative state of awareness. Um, and this is a bit like I talk about in my other videos with prayer technology, um, where basically you're meditating on I am. If you want to just do this for a second with me. Take a deep breath in. And on the inhale, inhale say I. On the exhale, say am. I am. I am. And then feel into the spaciousness that that creates. Becoming the witness and becoming that I am then it creates this space. You can be like, I am happiness. I am purposeful, All right? And you can kind of lean into those things that, but if you say, for example, you start doing like, I am successful, maybe you can feel that. Maybe if you do, I am wealthy, you can't feel that. So if you can't feel that, the whole purpose is not the words, it's the practice, right? And this is where it's also can be useful to just meditate upon the divine quality, uh, just the quality 
of wealthy. Wealthy, success, happiness, prosperity, healthiness, healthiness. And also, so this is what is happening now is when you go in and you just meditate on the pure awareness and you meditate on the I am and you don't attach a condition after it, right? Because the I am plus whatever follows is what you become because it's what you identify with. Now, what follows, the I am is the pure awareness. The I am is the equation of God consciousness becoming something. So when you don't attach a condition to it, you're becoming what's called unconditional. This is what unconditional love points to, unconditional thinking. We're very leading, we're very on the leading edge right now. I love it. Um, so becoming unconditional is not attaching to a condition, meaning there is no limiting belief. Now, when you attach a condition, which is the plus whatever follows that, now you're creating a new condition. So that's what I mean is that you're now, instead of being programmed in the reactive mind to the world of what everybody else tells you you should be doing and what everybody else, what all the media and all this stuff is, now you're becoming able to actually reprogram yourself and connect into what is my dream reality? What is this version of myself living into this? And now you're thinking from it. Let me just check my notes here. All right, because when you try to change the outer, it's not effective because it's the effect of the cause found within. So even just being able to go and start doing this work on the level of identity, another powerful practice is understanding the mirror principle. And that's the mirror principle is the as within, so without, right? And it's understanding what's going on in your inner dialogue and in your inner landscape. And even as you do that I am practice, becoming aware of what you're putting after I am. Becoming aware of your inner conversation and what you think about yourself. Becoming aware of that when you're having those voices of self-doubt, when you're having those voices of regret, and being able to go in and to love those parts of yourself and also reframe that. Reframing the meaning of the past. Because the past is not set in stone. The past, when you're remembering the past, it's your memory of the past. You ever notice how multiple people often remember the past differently, even if they're at the same situation? So you can change your meaning of the past by becoming aware of it and processing the emotions around it. Taking deep breaths and feeling that whatever you need to feel to have that closure, have that forgiveness, and then being able to go in and kind of revise it, revise the scene. This is another practice uh, Neville used to teach, Neville Goddard used to teach, um, called revision. And it's basically like you go in to a deeply relaxed state. You can take a few deep breaths or you can do it like before you go to sleep. And you imagine scenes from your past or scenes from your day that you wished had gone differently. And you imagine them to have the meaning that you would now wish them to have, or you can even change the scene altogether. And then what that does is that's like priming you and pre-paving you for the next day, especially if you're using it on your own routine, right? Like you want it, like for me, I'm wanting to have more energy when I do these videos or like waking up inspired. So before I went to bed last night, I brought that in and it works, it's simple. And so like the mirror principle as well is when you're looking in the mirror, Paying attention to what, like, you can even do a practice for a few minutes where you really look in the mirror and really look at your, what is, how do you, what comes up in your mind when you're looking at your own reflection, like, of yourself in an actual mirror? And if you pay attention to your own features, you'll start to notice kind of, like, different subtle things that will come up and different feelings that will come up in your body. Now, what happens is when you meet each of those feelings with love and you embrace that and then you choose to say to yourself, like, I love myself, I love you. Like, you t like you're talking to yourself, like, I love you. And even when you're like brushing your teeth or shaving or anything like that, if you just say the words like health, wealth, love, health, wealth, love. Now, as you're looking at your mirror in your daily routine, you're creating those associations. 
And then also you can start to just become aware of your own inner dialogue. You can even like kind of like, like praise yourself or kind of coach yourself for the day when you wake up in the morning. Now, negative self-talk, right? Becoming aware of those patterns that come up throughout the day and, and being able to meet them with love and also be aware that they're not necessarily ours because if you attach and identify with that, it's also like being able to, to let go of that. In, I had this happen the other day. Is like You can also just become aware of it and just be like, I'm ready to let this go. And then also, if you're not ready to do that, you can just you can let it be. Allow yourself to feel and process those emotions or you can embrace it and bring it into yourself. Embrace your shadow. And another way is just stepping into that witness awareness, right? And realizing that you are greater than your conditioning. You're greater than your thoughts. Because often those insecurities that come up in your inner dialogue are thoughts about what others think of you. Now, not only is it enough to try to even figure out what others are thinking, now you're thinking about what they're thinking about you. Um, and when you do that, you go out of your frame, and now you're thinking about what they're thinking about you, and it's affecting the reflection that you're getting, right? And it's causing you to feel insecure. And the way that you shift out of that is that you come, you come in your body, you come out of your head and into your body, and you self-source your own meaning. Living from your own meaning. This is what I'm saying. Becoming aware of the story that you're living in. That like you get to be um, magnetic. You get to be magnetic, magnanimous. You get to be confident. Um, you get to live in your own meaning in life. And that like when you do that and when you express yourself and you live in your truth and you lead your life, that um, positive things constantly happen for you. And you are deserving to be loved and received by the world. Now that's a story. And living in that, right, can shift what you're getting in that mirror because it's also working through the energies that are coming up in yourself. Becoming aware of those somatic patterns that come up in the body landscape and being able to meet those in the moment. Yes, doing this transformational work is powerful, but also the real transformational work happens in our lives. And like not using that as an excuse to not be able to just show up in our lives and be able to work because it's so powerful to actually work through these energies when we're actually showing up and living our life as well. Because then that's like leaning into that version of yourself and you start to also like if you have um, things that come where people don't aren't receiving you or you sometimes don't feel respected by people or any sort of like negative situation with others taking responsibility for your own vibration will free you from that by being able to change your imaginal image of who you are because often the reflection that we get back from others is actually how we see ourselves. right this all comes back to the self-concept thing so when you start to go in and visualize and imagine yourself to be a different version a new version of yourself you can actually go and imagine how you want to be seen in the eyes of others and it's really trippy how this actually works um, other people will actually start to see you how you see yourself and and how you imagine others to see you will also set up your expectation, right? Because your expectations are also beliefs of expecting what's going to come. And that also can change what timeline you come on, like your beliefs create your reality kind of thing, like you're expecting certain things to happen. That's why people that always expect bad things to happen often always have bad things happening to them in the future. Um, basically, your past only exists as a memory and your future is an imagination. The only thing that exists is the present moment. And so another way is using prayer or meditative affirmation, right? So prayer is a form of meditative affirmation. It's going into a deeply relaxed state, taking a few deep breaths and now becoming aware of the di inner dialogue, becoming aware of any part of yourself that is coming up for integration or as well becoming aware of the still small voice, becoming aware of the inner guidance. And then in that place, that relaxed place, right? Because this is yin and yang. Right? If you're always just trying to affirm all the time, there's no space, right? It's like being able to let go and wire in and finding that balance between. But when you're in a relaxed state where your subconscious is actually fully receptive because you're more in that like meditative, like more relaxed, like theta state, alpha to theta state, 
right? Waking mind, like super busy waking mind is beta. And then it goes alpha, theta, delta. Delta is like deep sleep. But in between that, going into relaxed alpha to theta, especially in theta, um, which you get in deeper meditation, but even just pausing and going into that deeper space, your subconscious mind is more receptive to your intentions and to you being able to guide that inner dialogue. And the way that I re relate this is to like grooves that are formed over time. Imagine a record, right? Now, you ever heard of Akashic Records? So imagine your life is an Akashic record. It is like a record, like a song record, right? That um, there's certain grooves that are placed into a record that allow that record to play that song. Now, those patterns are the patterns of the subconscious, and those patterns repeat over time. Now, as you do the clearing work, it's like creating a blank record where now you can put a new pattern in, and now it kind of smooths that slate, and then intention would create a new pattern, and then that pattern would start to play in the song of your life, right? Which would be instead of struggle and disease and people don't get me and all that, it would be like thriving and love and um, happiness and creative fulfillment. And that would be the, the, the predominant song of the theme that you're living. But remember, this is all about the story that you're living in. It's all about your inner dialogue. So now as you start to clear and create that entrainment, right? Now your inner dialogue starts to become automatic, right? So now it starts to become natural to you to be thinking those thoughts from that version of you that like, actually, I got this. Oh yeah, no, having a new creative inspiration coming in today. Actually, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna do the thing that I really wanna do today. And anything is possible today. Like you'll just start feeling this expansion and you'll start being and acting as though you already are who you want to be because you are already who you wish to be, right? You are the current fulfillment of all that has caused you to become who you are. And now you can give yourself permission to assume the state of being where now you are thinking from that state of consciousness, not of it. You're not thinking about it. You're not, it's not wishful thinking. It's wish fulfilled thinking. You're feeling yourself. You're living from it. You're embodying it. You're just being it. And you're stepping into that version of reality to live and to tell and to live in that new story. And that's also an inspiration for those that were meant to serve here on the leading edge. So, Thank you so much for tuning in today. I invite you to hit the thumbs up and leave a comment as well with whatever you'd like to appreciate or any ideas um, that you have for this channel and other videos, as well as, you know, let me know how your transformational journey of working with the inner dialogue is going. You know, again, as we continue to leave these comments and interact with this space, we're making connections with people all over the world. And the intention, again, is to create group coherence of a shared intention because that is what is up. And also, if you haven't already, uh, smash the subscribe and hit the bell. Ding, ding, ding. If you want to get the fresh videos notified because that's the only way it's going to happen every single time they come out. Peace and many blessings. I will see you on the next one.